Hey everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of the Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brun. On this episode, I'm really excited to have with me legendary Night Ranger guitarist Brad Gillis. We'll talk about his upcoming solo album, Night Ranger, what he has going on in the world of television, and of course we'll also touch on Ozzy Osbourne. I think you guys are going to really enjoy this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. Now, without further ado, let's get started with my conversation with the one, the only, Mr. Brad Gillis. All right, hey everybody, how you doing? This is the latest episode of the Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brun. Today, I am really super excited to have with me longtime Night Ranger guitar player, Brad Gillis. Brad, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, Mike. Happy to be here, man. Never a dull moment, and you're part of that moment. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Are uh, you keeping safe and everything during these crazy times? Oh, yeah, man. The only place I go these days is to go get groceries and, uh, and gas. So, you know, <laughs> I leave here every, every, every 10 days, I leave here all gloved up and and you know everything i need to stay safe so Absolutely. yeah man all cool. good cool well i know a few months back you know i've seen a lot of news about your solo cd you've been working on that i guess on and off for the last couple of years what's the status of that is that close to wrapped up is it done you know what's the status well i'm to the point where i'm you know checking on mixes on different devices mm -hmm. everything sounds good uh to the point where i'm going to start actually shopping it to the labels that are interested awesome. figure out who can i just want to know who could actually put it out there put and make a difference and, and mm -hmm. actually get it heard by the by the public so uh yeah it's it's been taking a long time to, to come around but mm -hmm. uh i tell you man you know i everything's done here at my home you can see all the stuff <laughs> yep, i got absolutely you know, I, I collect vintage guitars and amplifiers and so i'm able to get whatever sound i want and mm -hmm. uh you know, I'm, I'm and just the whole thing. I mean, I'm doing it all myself. Everything from engineering it to producing it to mixing it to mastering it. So it's it's great. I just you know I want to get it off my plate and right, so I can move on to some other projects. <laughs> mm -hmm, right, <laughs> absolutely. I'm sure. Now I know that you know Night Ranger, Night Ranger fans are excited to hear you working with Gary Moon again on this on this album. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So basically, Gary Moon, the singer that came in when Jack Blaze left to do the Damn Yankees, I yep. got back together with Kelly Kagey, our drummer, and we uh, auditioned like 20 guys down in LA in, in the 93-ish, uh, whatever mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. And Gary Moon came in and just just blew everybody away. And so we did this this record, Feeding Off the Mojo, with Gary, but I've always kept in touch with him. And now, uh, you know, I got back with him and he's been, uh, you know, he's in LA and I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. I had him up here five, six, seven times, whatever it was. And, mm -hmm. And got him singing on the record, and I pulled the best out of that guy, man. And it just sounds fabulous. He's singing. Mm -hmm. He's got that low, girthy voice. Yeah, it's just very uh, appeasing. And then he, you know, he's got that that screaming rock killer voice mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. you know that I wanted on the record too. So I'm singing two songs on the record. He's singing nice. the rest. And I just want to get this thing out here, man. I've, I've been working on these songs for literally eight or ten years. Mm -hmm. We'll pull it back to some of the older songs that I've wanted to pull on the record that I knew were viable. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm excited. You know, I got mm -hmm. probably 17, 18 songs with Gary, probably do 12 or 13 for the record and wow. save the rest for the next next record. And do you have a title yet for the record that you could share or are you not sure of it yet? No, I um, haven't got that far. Okay. I'm trying to figure that one out, artwork mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But we do have this one song called Sex and the Money mm -hmm. that, uh, that we already did a video for mm -hmm. and I got my fiance Carmen on there singing a little part on it. Let me tell you all about it, honey. I do <laughs> sex and the money. So, so yeah, I already, already into it, you know, doing videos and stuff, but uh, I just got to land this record deal. But it's, you know, it's an advantage for me being at home and sheltered is I have a home studio. I'm able to keep working of here. Of course. And we're starting to throw around some Night Ranger ideas because we got another record deal with Frontiers Records with that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're going to start throwing that stuff around. And, uh, you know, I'm still doing my TV music and, you know, my, I've been placing for, well, many years, last 20 years, hot and heavy on uh, music mm -hmm. placement, ESPN, Fox Sports, all the mm -hmm. Tiger Woods, PlayStation games. And, and my la latest placement was a flamenco track on The Price is Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so how did you get involved in something like that? Because I'll be honest, I didn't realize that you were doing all of that. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. You're on like um, Sports Center, The Price is Right. How do you get involved in something like that? Uh, well, I, my first placement was... Uh, 
when I finished the Gil Rock Ranch record mm -hmm. back in the early 90s, mm -hmm. and they picked up a couple songs for the movie Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead with Christina mm -hmm. Applegate. Yep. And uh, had a couple things on there, and uh, that kind of got me going, but I didn't get hot and heavy till about 1999, 2000, mm -hmm. when I was introduced to the music supervisor for ESPN. So I've been throwing them tracks for the last 20 years mm -hmm. and that got to be on you know on sports center background music and then uh espn bought out the monday night monday night football stuff and mm -hmm. i had a couple things i'd be watching monday night football and all of a sudden <laughs> i hear my song going out to commercial it's like <laughs> okay that's cool you know right right Right. I'm sure that was also helpful during the whole grunge Nirvana era to have another source of income where you're not relying on the uh, the 80s rock scene, so to speak. Exactly, exactly. Absolutely. I just like to keep busy and it's all been music related. So I've been very lucky with that, Mike. Right. So you, you mentioned your first solo CD just now, and there was a couple of guests on that, um, you know, playing drums. You had Kelly on, on the album playing drums. Um, I think you had uh, Greg Allman was on the album, Carmen of Peace is on the album. Yes. Any special guests with you on this album? I know you said you're doing a lot of this yourself. Any, anybody with you on this new record? Well, you know, Derek Sherinian was on my solo record, Gil Rock Ranch, too. And Derek, yeah, right. people that don't know Derek, I mean, he, he played with, you know, Alice Cooper and, and uh, Billy Idol and, mm -hmm. and Dream Theater and Joe Bonamassa. He's <laughs> played with everybody. And he, mm -hmm. he, I met him when he was nobody. And, and he, lived in, he grew up in Santa Cruz. I met him one night uh, when I was down in Santa Cruz at Capitola hanging out for a weekend. Mm -hmm. And we got to be good buddies. And I ended up, uh, he joined my band Mega Mega right when Night Ranger broke up, right around 1990-ish. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we started uh, get, trying to get this band together that never really materialized. But uh, we got into, I uh, started getting Derek into playing keyboards and me trading off licks. He's a great keyboard player, great soloist. So he was all over my Gil Rock Ranch record. So I got him on like six or eight cuts on the new record. Nice. Got him soloing on a few things. And he, it's so funny because he solos like a guitar player <laughs> and, and he uses pitch bin like doing a wham like doing a whammy bar so oh wow <laughs> uh, so i got him on a bunch of stuff so that's mm -hmm. great and and uh you know i i uh, got the drummer uh, uh larry howell from vicious rumors playing yep. on a couple of drum tracks i got a local drummer matthias montgomery that lives a mile from me playing on a bunch of other stuff and nice. recorded everybody here at my house and mm -hmm. and uh you know, and I got some special guests coming in on, on this one song called Gun for Hire. Yes. Uh, basically, you know, you know, there was a movie, uh, uh, that documentary I was in called Hired Gun yep. that came out. It's on Netflix. I think it still is. But, yep. uh, but, you know, I just had this whole idea. I mean, you know, all these Gun for Hires that were huge that, you know, were, got in these great positions playing with these big A-list artists mm -hmm. that never got much recognition, but they're, you know, licks on fire. I'm a gun on, you know, a gun mm -hmm. for hire, you know? So mm -hmm. I got a couple people that are involved on in, in, in these major gun for hires in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, but until they're actually on the record, this is just coming down in the last 10 days. So sure. until they're on the record, I, I don't want to mention any names, but, you know, and then, uh, you know, Gary Moon singing, me singing a couple, Mm -hmm. um you know as far as other special guests i'm to the point where i could pretty much get anybody of who's course. ever available and interested <laughs> but uh i can only really talk about what's happened already so of that's course so far. of course now before you mentioned the feeding off the mojo album which i have to say i you know i love that on um, understandably night ranger shies away from it for obvious reasons but i love that album you look back on that what are your thoughts on that album well i thought it was great you know it's just uh you know, spending that whole decade of the 80s, you know, with Jack and Kelly and doing what we did. Uh, when Jack left the band to do the damn, damn Yankees and we ended up hiring Gary Moon and doing the Feed Off the Mojo, it was like a whole different perspective on, mm -hmm. on things because Gary has a whole different voice than Jack or Kelly and he's mm -hmm. more of a screaming rock singer, I, I should yep. say, mm -hmm. whatever. But, uh, you know, when I started doing this record, I thought, man, let's, I got to get Gary on this. So mm -hmm. I had him up like this a bunch of times and we, I got the best out of him. I really worked him hard and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, just it's to the point where uh, I'm ready to put this sucker out, man. So <laughs> Absolutely. Now, yeah. obviously we start off by talking about how we're kind of cooped up in the house when things lift and, and we're allowed to get, get back out there. Any chance of you doing any solo shows with him or are you going to stick just to the Night Ranger stuff? Well, there's not, you know, I mean, as far as doing shows, it's really, not really happening right now, mm -hmm. but right, you know, uh, but but you know, then again, we we just booked Sturgis for the tenth of next month. Mm -hmm. uh, 
which you know i mean i i we're no no meet and greets not even doing a sound check we're just oh, wow. flying in going straight on stage doing our show going back to the hotel and flying home so we're trying mm -hmm. to make it as safe as possible for the band mm -hmm. and then we have a drive-in show with night ranger yes. on the 22nd of august mm -hmm. uh in pittsburgh outside of pittsburgh yep. uh so those are the two shows we got booked so far but everything you know mike we lost that that Sammy Hagar, White Snake, Night Ranger, mm -hmm. 42 show amphitheater tour, mm -hmm. which was a drag as everybody was looking forward to that. So I that had to give up my tickets, tickets obviously. <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, and I was checking the numbers when things were starting to shut down and our ticket sales were, I mean, a lot of places were sold out. And, mm -hmm. and it's just too bad, but it's the way it is. In fact, Mike, I got to tell you, this was going to be our biggest year since the 80s. We had mm -hmm. like 98 shows booked and probably would have booked more. Yeah. And we haven't done that many shows since the since the eighties. So it's, you know, after March fifteenth when shit started getting real. <laughs> yep. Um, you know, we had uh, another show booked on the sixteenth of March and they canceled that because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And then we were gonna be flying over to Punta Cana and playing at the Hard Rock on the mm -hmm. beach with this great eighties festival, a couple day festival, mm -hmm. and we were gonna hang out, take a little vacation break there, and that yep. got canceled. And the thing is, we were, we canceled it. That they didn't okay. cancel it. Okay. We we didn't want to be stuck over there sure. and not be able to fly home. Of course, oh, our biggest concern. So, which in know, hindsight's a smart move on your guys' part. Yep. So we canceled everything from then on, and uh, like mm -hmm. I said, Sturgis on the tenth of next month would be our first show, and uh, right, it'll be almost five months. Absolutely. And you know what? I just read a couple of hours ago that the M3 festival was also canceled for this year. Yeah, postponed until March. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, and you guys are supposed to be a part of that as well, I believe, this year, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we do so. that every couple of years. We, we mm -hmm. don't go back every year. We do like every other year. It's always a blast. I mean, we always hang out for those two or three days and watch the other bands and just hang mm -hmm. out. And yeah. make, a, make a weekend or, you know, spend a couple of days down there having fun, you know, hanging out with like all these bands, mostly all the bands everybody knows anyway, because we've either, mm -hmm. you know, toured with them or met them somewhere or mm -hmm. did some type of function with them. So, but, uh, you know, they're pushing most of these shows off till next year and hopefully they'll push the Hagar tour. Uh, to, into next summer so we're waiting to see if that happens but nobody knows now i mean nobody knows everything's right. crazy right now absolutely and you guys as a band had a history with sammy hagar right wasn't he like one of the first ones to bring you out on tour night ranger yeah we were still ranger we took a, the ticket mm -hmm. to the people tour uh and uh you know we i think we did like 13 shows but um yeah we had this connection with 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 sammy because our keyboard player you know fits at the back in the day mm -hmm. you know we played uh keyboards you know, he played bass for us, uh, keyboards for us, but keyboards played too. bass for Montrose and keyboards for Sammy Hagar. So we had yep. the connection with Sammy and just got a hold of him and said, you know, hey, you know, throw us on this tour. We were a brand mm -hmm. new band trying to get out there and he threw us on that tour. And it was, mm -hmm. it was great. It was kind of the launching pad for, for, for Night Ranger. And then, sure. uh, of course, after that, you know, I did my Aussie stint and then we got a record deal and mm -hmm. boom, 83 on, <laughs> right, 89, exploring. we were doing 250 shows a year with Night Ranger. Absolutely. And I think the summer tour would also have given you a connection to reconnect with Joel, right? Who was part of Night Ranger for a few years. Now he's in uh, White Snake. Yeah, you know, my good buddy Joel, man, we had a great time when he was in this band. He did like seven or eight years with us, but mm -hmm. uh, just a great guy. Fantastic player. Unbelievable. Agreed. Agreed. Kept me on my toes, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but uh, but it, was, it was just a great run with him. And then when he left, he could go with White Snake. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 you know I would, he just wanted to, he wanted to play harder you know i even you know white snake's a harder rock band than night mm -hmm. ranger and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh you know gave him a chance to you know stand out with red beach on guitar too it's just it's so funny because red beach was with night ranger for a year right exactly. was like, like all the guys that leave night ranger go to white snake yeah, exactly it's like you, you guys are the breeding ground for the night the future uh, yeah. white snake guitarist you, right? sure, sure. Uh, you know it's funny though hearing you say that he wanted to play some of the hardest stuff because you know like i said it before i'm a fan for like 35 almost 40 years of night ranger and some people I know just instantly think of Night Ranger as the ballad band, right? It's just the Christian, goodbye, right? So that's sometimes sentimental, a blessing, street. sentimental yeah. street, so on and so forth, right? So um, that could be both a blessing and a curse, right? But then when I bring some people to see you guys live, they're like, holy crap, this band rocks. The two guitar players, you know, whoever it's been through the years, and whether it's Eddie's coming out tonight or... Um, laid on me something newer they're like oh, yeah, this yeah. band really freaking rocks and i think that surprises a lot of people so what are your thoughts is it's like a double-edged sword having the success with those ballads 
Well, you know, we had a problem back in the day because uh, when we uh, went from Boardwalk to MCA Records, of course, uh, Sister Christian came out and it was all over the world. It was mm -hmm. huge. It was, it was like, it was bigger than the band. In fact, you know, you should say, uh, oh, you play the band Night Ranger. Who's that? Oh, Sister Christian. The, the, right. song's, <laughs> bigger than, the song's bigger than the band. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but after the su success with uh, Sister Christian, you know, the record company just wanted to, you know, we're having success with that. So they released Goodbye and Sentimental mm -hmm. Street, When You Close Your Eyes, all these yep. ballads. And they pigeonholed us into, into a ballad band. And, mm -hmm. you know, when it came around to like 1988 uh, to do a, a record then, we, we, didn't, we didn't even give them a ballad. Right. And like, well, <laughs> well, where's your ballad? It's like, right. well, we want to rock, you know? <laughs> right. They said, no, no, you need a ballad. Mm -hmm. So they made us pick a song from an outside writer that wrote ballads. And they picked a mm -hmm. song called I did it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did, I did it, love, yeah. mm -hmm. I did it for love. It's like, oh my God, really? Mm -hmm. And that was pretty much the nail in the coffin for the band. Mm -hmm. I mean, we lost our, our, our male audience and, and everything, you know, plus, you know, 200, 250 shows a year in the 80s, right around 88, 89, mm -hmm. we were personally fried. Sure. We just needed to take a break. And so we took mm -hmm. a break. And of course, Dad, Jack did the Yankees and I ended up mm -hmm. doing uh, Gil Rock Ranch, you know, with, mm -hmm. had met Greg Allman, had him sing two songs and, sure. you know, hooked up with Derek Sherinian, like I said, and then, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, uh, just kind of moved on to different things. And then it wasn't until like late 95 is when the Feeding Off the Mojo era with Gary Moon kind of mm -hmm. staled out and, and the Japanese came, gave us an offer, said, hey, we got a record deal for you and a tour in Japan if you put the original band back together. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, late 95, 96, and we decided to uh, go to Japan, sold out, did great over there, had a record deal, and I think the first one was Neverland. Neverland, an I amazing know. album to me. Absolutely, I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, thank you, man. Uh, in fact, other people mentioned that too, and I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta listen to it again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but that, that re did the resurgence of Night Ranger, and now we just, mm -hmm. you know, went through a couple lineup changes, but uh, man, we, we're, we're kicking butt, man. I mean, Absolutely. we were kicking butt until mm -hmm. March 15th, but, uh, you know, we're hoping everything subsides and they come up with some type of vaccine or cure. So, you know, we get back to normal in 2021. But let's hope so. Now, before you mentioned that drive-in show around the Pittsburgh area, which is like six, seven hours from me. So I'm contemplating taking the drive because I haven't been to a concert since March. Do you know how that's going to work? Or do you know anything about that? How that I've never been to a drive-in concert before. So. Oh, I, it's new to us. It's, it's our first mm -hmm. one. I just uh -huh. think you, you, you pack a car load and they charge you per car load and, yep. and everybody parks a little ways from each other, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think what they do is we play live out to the cars mm -hmm. and I think they're able to tune into a radio station on their dial wow. that gets a live feed in their car mm -hmm. to blast it in your car. I think that's what's going on, but okay. it's our first one. It's, it's new to us too, but right. Right. you know, I mean, if that's what's happening these days and that's going to be the, 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 new form of live music and, and, you know, it pays us good enough to do it. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, why not get out and do some shows doing that? But I just want to get back to the norm, man. I, I sure. miss playing those, those big sold out, you know, shows, uh, you know, I mean, you know, back in 2011, we did, 65 shows with Journey and Foreigner, and it was mm -hmm. just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. and then, you know, our Sammy Hagar tour last year, and Def yeah. Leppard tour a couple years before that, and, and of course, this tour that should have been, that I'd be out in the road right now, you know, finishing up this uh, Sammy Hagar Whitesnake sure. tour, but it's kind of what it is, Mike, and you just mm -hmm. got to do it. Absolutely. Now, I've heard rumors, tell me if this is true, that you're actually working on some TV shows also. Is, is that true, like trying to develop your own TV shows? Yeah, I started doing that a couple years back, and okay. I got about four of them right now, and they're okay. they're all a little different, but they're all music related. In fact, this nice. latest one I got, it's 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 well, they're all pretty good, but uh, <laughs> I, I I got some action from ABC, uh, nice. a bunch of uh, uh, production companies that uh, that makes these shows that that that. that that bring them to the network. So mm -hmm. things are looking good. In fact, I got a meeting after you with the production company on one of the shows. Oh, nice. Uh, so that's another side thing I'm doing. I got to tell you, Mike, I've, I've been lucky enough to uh, d delve into music all my life and all these different mm -hmm. avenues I'm taking, you know, whether it's playing live out or recording with Night Ranger or doing a solo mm -hmm. record or play some music on TV or writing musical TV shows. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm, 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 I'm loving it right now. And, and, and to be sheltered at home, uh, I mean, when I get on a roll, man, I'll get up, I'll put 16 hours in, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll, 
I'll go and, you know, I'll go from eight in the morning until, you know, two, three at night or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I got to look at the clock and I go, I got to go to bed, you know, <laughs> but, but it's exciting because I'm, I'm, I just, uh, I got all these ideas in my head and sure. I got to get them out, man. And, and, uh, you know, before, you know, being on the road with Night Ranger, you, you get burnt out on that stuff. You really do. And it's, you know, people ask you what, it, what I do for the living. Well, I travel for a living. Right. <laughs> and, I, funny. and I play in a band on the side for an hour. <laughs> but I, I travel 12 hours to get here and then 12 mm -hmm. hours to get home. So, um, and that kind of burns you out. So being at home, I'm, I'm locked and focused. Yeah. And you mentioned project. before about potentially Night Ranger putting, putting together some new songs for an album. I saw you post online about that a few months ago. Have you guys started anything even remotely doing that? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, uh, you know, Kelly had a couple ideas, passed them around, and and Kerry Kelly, our other guitar player, yep. and Jack had a, had something. I got a couple things I'm working on. We just got to get to the point where we either get on a Zoom call and start mm -hmm. going through stuff, mm -hmm. and everybody has their own home studio, and it's kind of a weird way, kind of, you know. <laughs> just dysfunctional way of, of writing a record because you're not all in a room jamming. We can't really do that. Right. You know, plus everybody lives in different parts of the country. So, um, you know, we're just going to do it the, the, the COVID way, you know, pass <laughs> things around and, and Zoom calls and such and uh, mm -hmm. start getting it together. I mean, uh, we got another deal, same label, Frontiers Records, that we've been doing uh, quite a few of the last Night Ranger records on. So uh, I think we're getting ready to ink that deal. And then once it's okay. solid, we're, we're going to start doing it. And I figure, you know, even with a couple of shows each month, it gives us all this extra time to, to work on these new Night Ranger, Night Ranger Absolutely. songs. Absolutely. Finish this record. Well, hopefully in 2021, we'll see a new release because the last few albums Night Ranger have done to me have been great. They kind of hop back to the classic Night Ranger sound and um, I, I think they've been really great albums. Oh, thanks, man. You know, I got to tell you, Mike, we've always had this format, which mm -hmm. is at least a, the, the Night Ranger's success is like the, the three big three part harmony vocals Absolutely. with a big book. And, you know, you have, you have Jack singing a verse, Kelly singing the B section, coming mm -hmm. together, the three of us. I sing all the high parts mainly. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, the, 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 the dual guitar thing, whether it's, you know, harmonies with, you know, the last couple of records with Joel, you know, yep. him and I doing the harmony things like Night Ranger Days or, yep. or the, all, the original version with Jeff Watts and I would do would be, uh, you know, I do a solo, he does a solo. At the end of the song, mm -hmm. we're harmonizing together. So yep. we stick to that format. And why, why change it? I mean, that's what we're known for. You, you get mm -hmm. too wild and too crazy out there. It's like people, it's like, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't sound like Night Ranger. Though. Oh, they're reaching for a different, they're trying to go for a different style, whatever. Right, so right, right. Stick to yeah. our guns. Absolutely. And you know, one of the things I love that the band has done the last couple of years is you were playing those full album shows. I think it was called like Dawn to Madness, I think is what you guys called yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. so upset because when you play by, I'm on Long Island, New York. When right. you played here, I was in Nashville that weekend. So I couldn't go to the Jersey show. I couldn't go to the Long Island show. So any chance when you guys get back to turn, you'll do stuff like that again? I think so. In fact, we had a couple more booked uh, okay. later this year because mm -hmm. uh, it worked out so well. And, you know, we took Dawn Patrol record, our first record, mm -hmm. and Midnight Madness. And we mm -hmm. play every song in, in order we were doing at one yes. point. Mm -hmm. in order and we call it the dawn of madness tour yep. mm -hmm. and uh you know it did real well over here because it's a different animal for people to come out and mm -hmm. see a lot of songs we did never even played since the 80s yep. so we had to kind of come in and relearn them which wasn't mm -hmm. hard to do because you know we all kind of knew what we did back then right. but to actually play them live was wow you know like penny i got your number and <laughs> right. you know, just just songs songs you 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 wouldn't hear mm -hmm. uh, young girl in love it's like we're you know, you listen on a record, it's like, mm -hmm. eh, you play it live and you slam it. It's like, oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Right. But uh, we went to Japan and, you know, usually you don't go to Japan unless you have a new record out. Mm -hmm. but they caught wind of us doing shows over in the States and how well they did. So they, mm -hmm. you know, the, late last year, they booked us back to Japan for a couple shows, two shows in Tokyo and one in Osaka, mm -hmm. sold right out. So they booked a third show in in tokyo mm -hmm. and that sold out mm -hmm. and we tried to do more but we had other things going on that were booked after that i think we could have done osaka fukioko nagoya we, mm -hmm. i mean i mean uh another two shows in osaka and more uh, other right. shows and we could have did six seven shows out of it but you know uh and people ate up the merch you know the mm -hmm. dog madness you know <laughs> like a whole new a whole new you know animal as far as the merch so yeah yep. uh you know you know and for for being a van you you gotta come up with different ideas to, to make money and keep your name out there and trying trying to do something new you know yep. and 
and fairly innovative. I mean, other people were, were, were doing the same idea, but mm -hmm. I, but we came up with doing the first the two, two albums. Records. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then in between, I think you guys were doing an acoustic set as well, which had songs like Starting All Over Again. I think sometimes you guys are doing Color of Your Smile. I'm like, those are great yeah. songs that are, to me aren't performed as much as I wish they were, because those are great songs. So that was a draw for me as well. Yeah, we kind of, you know, and in fact, this whole show ended up being two and a half to three hours yeah. long, where mm -hmm. we're usually doing an hour, hour and a half, mm -hmm. hour 45 at the most. So uh, it would, took a little more out of us to do it, but the audience appreciated it so well that we mm -hmm. could, it couldn't be denied, you know. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, and, and instead of slamming out two records in a row, we thought, let's just break it down and do a couple acoustic songs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what songs do you want to do? You know, we came yeah. up with the ones you mentioned and then, yeah. you know, added a couple more. And, you know, and we, we'd throw Damn Yankees in there, you mm -hmm. know. And, mm -hmm. And, uh, but uh, it, w it was a blast doing it. I, I miss doing it. Um, but, you know, it's just so strange right now, Mike. It's like, it is. Wow, yes. let's, just, let's just try to get through what we can. Absolutely. They're still, can still canceling shows uh, mm -hmm. that would be in the next month and a half or two. And post most of them have been postponed, which is good. Right. Right. Absolutely. Everybody's hoping on things will come, uh, come back around. Fingers crossed. Do you think the band would ever consider doing something like that with like the Seven Wishes album also? Or do you think you'll just stick to the first two? Oh, I don't know. We were just kind of getting locked into doing the, the Donna Bandis thing with mm -hmm. the first two records. You never know. I'm glad mm -hmm. you kind of mentioned it because, you know, I mean, doing all three records uh, and then we'd be doing a, a Bruce Springsteen uh, uh, three hour set. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, I, I don't know. But it's cool you mentioned it because there were some great songs on that record, too. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you guys are really blessed. You mentioned the harmonies before. And the last time I saw Night Ranger, which was like two years ago, a friend of mine that was with me turned to me and said, it's amazing. You know, these guys are not young kids anymore. They're not in their 20s. But both Jack, Kelly, yourself, even singing some of the harmonies, you still got great singing voices. The band still sounds amazing live. I mean, you guys, are, you must realize compared to a lot of your contemporary fan, friends, uh, other bands, you guys are pretty lucky right. there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I, I think we've been lucky in that in that aspect only because, you know, the three of us are in our 60s, you know, <laughs> and, and and saying that I'm the youngest one of right. the three of us in the 60s, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, you know, uh, what you're talking about, people are losing their voices. I tell you, it, I'm not going to mention names, but it's, mm -hmm. it's mostly the people that have that screaming rock voice. <laughs> yeah. I think when you get on your 60s, you can't really pull that off anymore. Sure. Mm -hmm. But you know, Night Ranger, Jack and Kelly, their vocals, they're, they're, they're not screamers, you know what I right. mean? Absolutely. They sing on their full voice mostly mm -hmm. and uh, within the range that they could do. So I think sure. we've been lucky in that part. Absolutely. Now, I think, you know, in terms of songwriting, you have songwriting credits on two of the biggest Night Ranger hits to me. You can still rock in America when you close your eyes. What do you remember about the songwriting of those songs and, and your contributions to them? Well, you know, I mean, at that time, uh, it was the 80s. And, you know, Jack was really prolific in songwriting. He was doing, doing a great job. And Kelly would come in on some great stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was out with Watson and we were partying all the time. Mm -hmm. we, were, you know, <laughs> uh, we were, you know, I just, it was like, you got to realize, man, the, the, de the decade of decadence <laughs> really pulled, pulled, pulled a lot of people in and it pulled mm -hmm. us in. And, you know, where I could have been home writing more songs and, mm -hmm. and I was uh, having too much fun. But, uh, you know, now that I, everybody will be personally, you know, settled down in, in, in a groove that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm sitting home writing all these, these, these songs for the solo record coming out and, mm -hmm. and kind of contributing, contributing to uh, the, the, the new, all the, the last few Night Ranger records. And, you know, I'm also constantly writing riffs and, and lyric ideas. Mm -hmm. But what's cool about these latest records we're doing, we're all just splitting everything even. You know, it's nice. not like, you know, someone is going to come in and write eight songs out of the record. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and it's great for the other two guys, the man, Kerry Kelly and, and Eric Levy, uh, mm -hmm. the other guitar player and, and, and our keyboard player. Because, sure. you know, uh, usually for these records, Jack and Kelly and I get together um, at, you know, different locations before everything came down with COVID. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'd sit in a room, we'd slam out, you know, just the nucleus of the band that always yeah. was, Jack and mm -hmm. Kelly and me. We started it out, you know, ever since the end of Rubicon in the late mm -hmm. 70s. Absolutely. And for us to get together and just slam out these ideas, we come up with the nucleus of these songs and bring it to and bring in Carrie and Eric and mm -hmm. and they'd have ideas and we'd emulate off their ideas. And but uh, you know, I we I think we still we're still putting out pretty good records, you know. It's I just, agree. A sign of the times, man. It's like, you know, you can't get much airplay. Right. Uh, 
classic rock radio is only playing classic rock songs, you know? <laughs> and they'll, they'll, they'll play you for a little bit, but they go back, back right back to the classics. Even my local radio station, you mm -hmm. know, when ACDC came out with that record, the last record, and Journey yeah. came out with their last record, you'd hear it for a week or two on the radio, and, it, yeah. and then they'd be, go back to all the, the big classic hits. So it's yeah. tough. But, you know, we still have a core audience that buys our records online mm -hmm. and downloads and everything. And, and people, our audience, they're still buying CDs, you know. Uh, I, mean, I, I think I have every one of your latest releases on CD still. <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah, so absolutely. So, you know, I, when I see a Red Strat, I think of Brad Gillis instantly, right? So, hey, give them back. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you start playing a, a Red Strat? What was the first one you had? Um, well, actually, I was playing my Black Les Paul Custom. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I thought I had it down here. Um, I have this early 70s Black Les Paul Custom that I played uh -huh. with on, and that was my guitar. Yep. And in 1978, you know, Eddie the Van Halen came out, and then, then uh, Eddie was playing this new device called a Floyd Rose Trummel, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So... So right about then, uh, a friend of my brother's came over and, and knocked on my door and, and he had a box in his hand. And he goes, hey man, I got this 1962 Stratocaster that I took apart and sanded down and I'm never gonna, I, I'm never gonna do anything with it. He goes, you wanted to fix it up? I said, okay, you know, I'll take it. And it really didn't mean much back then because in 78, a 62 guitar wasn't, plus sanded down, you know, mm -hmm. like a, you know, a vintage guitar worth thousands of dollars. And, sure. um, so I said, sure. So I started building it up and I had some leftover Imron red, orange red paint from my Dawson 240Z. I had an extra gallon of it. Okay. So I thought, well, I want to get this thing painted. So my brother said, take it down my friends. He has a body shop in Oakland. And, and I talked to him and he's going to spray it in his, in his auto booth. So I went down there and I took my Imron paint and he hung it up on a, on a, on a, on a hanger inside where he usually would paint cars. And mm -hmm. he did a gray, primer just like they put on cars <laughs> and the orange red emeron so okay. all right i had a body <laughs> so the neck sounded down sent it down i took it to this guitar luthier guy in oakland his name is mr kamamoto okay. and he goes you want me to do something cool and he goes i want to spray the spray the neck black i said hey cool and he goes <laughs> he goes i he goes you know let's try to find an original old fender logo to put on it so we <laughs> found that and so he did that setup. So I started putting together this guitar. I've kept the sure. original 62 pickup in the middle position and got a mm -hmm. hot stack uh, mm -hmm. on, on, on the, for the other single coil. And then I think I had a, a, a JB uh, Seymour Duncan um, on the, for, the, for the humbucker. Mm -hmm. So I had the pickups together. And then, like I said, Floyd Rose came out. And I really, I really wanted one, man. So <laughs> I looked into it and I found out this uh, Don Weir's Music City in San Francisco okay. uh, had one. Mm -hmm. So uh, the story is that Eddie got the first one, Neil Sean, Sean got the second one, and the third one was sitting at Don Weir's Music. Okay. So I didn't have a lot of money. This is 1978, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm, right? So when I called him up, they said, yeah. Well, I go, I don't I, I go, you got any trades? And I, I had a, like a 75 white Les Paul custom, <laughs> which was kind of worth a lot, you know, mm -hmm. and I, a grand back, whatever it was worth, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I didn't care. I had to have, I had to have this. Had I, had we listened to Eddie. I thought, man, this is, uh, this is definitely something I could work with. Mm -hmm. So I went down there and I, I traded that white Les Paul custom for the original third Floyd's ever built okay. and, the, and the clamping nut that goes on it uh -huh. <laughs> and, and a fret job. They were going to mm -hmm. give me a new fret job on that okay. neck. Mm -hmm. And they added a 20 second fret on it. So actually I did pretty good. Mm -hmm. Third Floyd Rose ever built, new nice. fret job and a 20 second fret. Mm -hmm. So I got that done, had that mounted on, all of a sudden I was ready to go. So I sure. just started getting into all these crazy whammy tricks and stuff. And one day I was fiddling around, I wanted to be a showman and I, you know, <laughs> bang my guitar and I heard it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I go, what's that? <laughs> and I, and I hit the tremolo bar and I kind of, I hit it up and I, I thought, it's a Floyd shaking, right? Okay. <laughs> so I thought, well, I could use that, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to be different with Eddie Van Halen doing the harmonic dive bombs. Sure. Mm -hmm. I started lowering that. Of course, the Floyd Rose is floating. Uh -huh. so it doesn't lean against the guitar. It floats so you can go up or down, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I started going all the way down, hitting a harmonic and go, Wee! Then, of course, wee! I felt crazy with that. So that's how I incorporated those, the, the, the flutter cricket sound and the okay. uh, the rising 
uh, uh, harmonic uh, crazy wiggle into Don't Tell Me You Love Me. So that's how I started getting into that. And my red strap was built up and uh -huh. used it on the Night Ranger stuff, used it when I went out with Ozzy. And yeah. uh, it's been my, my go-to guitar ever since. Absolutely. No, so you just mentioned Ozzy. To me, that Speak of the Devil album that you were on, for me, is some of those definitive versions, a Symptom of the Universe, a Sweet Leaf. To me, if I want to hear those songs, those are the definitive versions for me. And you did a great job on that. When, when, when you, and which I, you know, to me, some people might be like, really? Better than the originals? Yes, to me, better than the originals. Um, when you listen to that album, what do you think of it now all these years later? Well, um, I, you know, I'm very critical on my playing, you know, I, I thought it was, turned out to be a good record, but the great thing was I got a great sound on that record. I got mm -hmm. a great stereo sound, mm -hmm. you know, being a, being a three piece rhythm section with no keyboards where Ozzy mm -hmm. would have that on the, uh, on the Ozzy material, mm -hmm. uh, going and doing the all, only Black Sabbath stuff. I just kind of wanted to get a bigger, I already had a big sound. But uh, working out with my guitar tech, Mark Newman, uh, at the time, we, we started fiddling around with ideas to get this great stereo sound. So we had a couple rack mount units, and one was a chorus, and the other one was a delay. The chorus, we put it on a really super, you can't even hear it, but you could hear the kind of doing this, a slow mm. uh, chorus, super slow between going back and forth. And then we did a 10 millisecond delay from one amp to the other. So mm. it's like a sound so mm -hmm. every note i hit okay. gave it this huge stereo sound yeah and you know i'm still signing those records when i was on tour mm -hmm. and so I to speak of the double records and people going oh i love your tone love your tone and so that uh, you know i definitely got that out of it but uh mm -hmm. you know i definitely i wanted to interject my whammy you know my some of my wang bar stuff on on the record and i wanted to stick to tony's Iomi's solos, right. of course, a classic. You can't touch a classic. A classic, solo. right? Mm -hmm. Of course. You know, so I try to stick to that and then put my little innuendos in there, my little uh, you know signature things here and there. But uh, overall, you know, I mean, it's probably up. To, I mean, I got the, you know, I got the you know the gold record for it, but I'm sure mm -hmm. it went uh, platinum, maybe double platinum by now. But, I'm sure uh, it did. I'm you sure know, did. I mean, back then they really they had a hard time tracking records back then, where everything's mm -hmm. tracked real well right now. So, mm -hmm. but you know, I mean. Um, that was, uh, my, my first gold record was from that, from Speak the Devil. Amazing. And then, of and course, now, then Dawn Patrol came out and that went platinum and then mm -hmm. and Midnight Madness, that's probably up to triple platinum right now. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Ended up selling, uh, 18 million records between, uh, uh Ozzy and Night Ranger, um, uh, to date. And then the Speak of the Devil and Dawn Patrol album came out like a week apart from each other. So you had two albums that were... They came out the same week, Mike. The same week. Okay, wow, amazing. Album yeah. Network, the trade mm -hmm. magazine that went all to the radio stations. In fact, I, I've been cleaning out my house, having this mm -hmm. time at home, and just mm -hmm. going through a bunch of stuff and doing some interviews and stuff. And one was with Access TV I just did um, uh, with Katie, Dar uh, Katie Darrell. And uh, they said, bring out some memorabilia. You know, I brought out all these things, but... But I have the album network. Uh, uh, it's a it's a small booklet that went to the radio stations. At the bottom are the two picks of the week, mm -hmm. and there's uh, "Speak of the Devil" and "Bomb Patrol," <laughs> October fifteenth, nineteen eighty-two. Awesome. Week. Not bad for a kid from Honolulu or from Hawaii. There you go. <laughs> you know. I lost my tan. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. So now, for me, as, as people could see from some of the stuff in my background here, I'm a huge Kiss fan, right? And Night Ranger actually went out on tour with Kiss during the Creatures of the Night era. Um, do you remember anything about that? I know it wasn't, you know, a big seller in terms of tours, but what do you remember about that tour? Well, that's when they took their makeup off. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, I remember uh, Paul Stanley's girlfriend was Donna something, one of those beautiful... Donna Dixon, I think. Donna Dixon. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and she was out on the road and she mm -hmm. was uh, on a couple TV shows. That was cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember hanging out backstage and Gene Simmons kind of took a took me under his wing because uh, mm -hmm. he knew I was a player and uh, <laughs> he showed me, he showed me his photo collection. I'll never oh boy, <laughs> lucky you. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And at one point, uh, uh, I can't find the picture I wish I had it, but I'm mm -hmm. standing next to Gene and I got his, his, his boots on that are probably you know, a foot high. Mm -hmm. uh, he let me put them on. We took this picture of me and him together. I'll never <laughs> forget that. That was mm -hmm. cool. Uh, the tours were great. Uh, you know, you know, KISS fans are pretty diehard. They, you know, <laughs> yes. and a couple of times we kind of get booed off, you know, okay, booed a yeah, little yeah. bit because we're a brand new band. Sure. But then again, you know, we had Don't Tell Me You Love Me on the radio. Since mm -hmm. we went to that, people were like, wah. <laughs> and we'll, 
Well, it was great for Night Rangers, and, and we did a video on Don't Tell Me You Love Me, our first single. Mm -hmm. And um, MTV had just came out and with their 24-7 format of videos, and mm -hmm. they didn't have enough content. So they were playing Don't Tell Me You Love Me, literally, dude, 25 yeah. times a day. Absolutely, absolutely. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, look, I know people who became Night Ranger fans from seeing you guys on that tour opening up for Kiss. So you guys, you know, obviously did well there. Now I've heard Jack say, and I don't know if this is true, that the song Touch of Madness was actually based off of that tour with Kiss. Is that, is there any truth to that? Oh, you know, you hear all kinds of stories. <laughs> Fair I, enough. You, you got to ask Jack that. But <laughs> I, I got to tell you, you know, that we were, we were into a lot of madness right about that time. Mm, there you go. <laughs> I mean, we, you know, that's, you know, the decade of decadence, you know, mm -hmm. it was uh, getting a little wild about then. And that's pretty much a song about, you know, being wild in the eighties, you know, and if you mm -hmm. look, look at that back cover, you know, of uh, Midnight Madness, you mm -hmm. know, all these weird creatures and spacemen and sure. we actually had, like, we had, there was like drug dealers, you know, in the <laughs> old photo and, mm -hmm. and girls we were dating and all these, mm -hmm. you know, it just, it was just, uh, it kind of brought it all together for everything going on back then. But, uh, Absolutely. you know, that's our, that's our big record. And, and then, uh, you know, when uh, it's still Rock in America came out, the first single, off the Midnight Madness record, man, you know, all over MTV again, Absolutely. you know, and that, that took us to the next level. You know, still opening for all these, you know, ZZ Tops and Cheap Tricks and mm -hmm. all these great tours we were doing back then. And mm -hmm. and then uh, they released this little old ballad called Sister Christian. And uh, and that just, boom, shakalaka. That, mm -hmm. <laughs> that took us over the top, um, mm -hmm. all over MTV again. Oh, absolutely. Uh, all over the radio. In fact, it was, people got sick of it when they played it so much. In fact, you know, God, I just heard it the other day in my local classic rock station. Um, but that's the time when we just got off the road and the record company and management all said, you guys should start headlining, you know? Mm -hmm. And we had three great songs under our belt, you know, don't sure. tell me how to be rocking America and Sister Christian. So mm -hmm. we geared up for a headline tour and got all this, you know, built a school stage and had all these trucks with great lighting and all this, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Headline status stuff, right? Good. And our, well, I think it was our first show pulling into La Crosse, Wisconsin to the Coliseum mm -hmm. there and okay. pulling in for sound check and looking up at the marquee. It said, Night Ranger tonight sold out. Uh -huh. the <laughs> definite nice. pinnacle of our career. Absolutely. Absolutely. From then on through the 80s, we were headlining and kicking ass and doing eight to 15,000 seaters all over the country, selling out in Japan, did a couple of Budokans in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we did our European run and, and that, you know, 250 shows a year, man, for, uh, until like 89, when it got stale and everybody got sure. burned out and we sure. took a break. Now in the last 10 years also, besides just the various festivals, there's also these music cruises and you guys have done the Monsters of Rock cruise. And I know Kiss you guys cruise. did the Kiss cruise, which to me, I, I was on that. And you guys, every show that you guys did, I think you did three that year, were amazing. Yeah. And I even noticed on your social media, you had posted a picture when you did the video for your new album. And on the wall, it looked like you had a Kiss Cruise, the, the poster from there. I'm like, nah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys have good memories of that cruise? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, the guys in Kiss, they've always been, you know, I mean, they, they've always uh, remembered us and mm -hmm. treated us great whenever we see them hang out and do a show with them here or there. And mm -hmm. that whole tour that we did back in 83. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so um, uh, when we did that tour, it was like kind of old home week, you know, just hanging out sure. with everybody. And, you know, um, they're, they're just great people and, and they, they really know how to, they, they really know how to make money, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, they, they monetize over everything from all the merch things they do. And then yeah. uh, my buddy, Jim Cara, who makes my Brad Gillis Fernandez yes. uh, mm -hmm. uh, copies, yep, I mean. uh, which I've sold quite a few, um, uh, exact replicas of, of my, my bubble, my original 62, mm -hmm. and then, then cleaner versions. Anyway, he was doing all the Gene Simmons bases. Yep. And, and. They, they sold like 78 bases on that yep. cruise. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. crazy. Yep. And Gene would play it for one song and spit uh -huh. blood on it. <laughs> right. And then, you know, you get 12 grand for that sucker. You right. know? <laughs> was like, geez, man. Absolutely. But uh, yeah. they, they, really, they really know how to, how to work the system. That's for sure. Now, you're doing master classes online now also, right? Yeah, I just did my first one uh, last week, last Monday. Um, awesome. Yeah, another one coming up in September, and that was a new one for me. You mm -hmm. know, set up the whole Zoom thing. I mean, you and I are just doing a re regular call, sure. but mm -hmm. I had to set up uh, 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 an amplifier. I had something set up. I had to come up with this great 
system to be able for my students to be able to hear my guitar playing. Mm -hmm. And I actually jammed to one of my original songs. Nice so thing. I had to do a playback system that I could hear the song playing back at a mm -hmm. loud enough volume to play along to. So it took me a day to get the whole setup together, sure. but it turned out real well. In fact, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, David Fishoff, the guy that's running those uh, master classes, mm -hmm. uh, came in and said, Brad, I got to take your guitar tone. I mean, which, which you did turned out great mm -hmm. and, and, and gave me some good compliments because I spent a freaking day trying to get it all <laughs> together. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just didn't want to cheap out on anything. Sure. And, and I have, dude, I got access to everything here. Sure, everything. absolutely. Oh, you can tell. Just look around you. I got 120 guitars and 40 amps, you know, I get every wow. sound possible. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just wanted to up my game on that. And so that's Absolutely. not that I'm really a lesson guy. I'd rather just do original content, music, okay. uh, TV show kind of stuff. Uh, but I thought I'd do it and the money was good. And okay. I thought mm -hmm. well, I could do one a month, you know, that's yeah. just no sweat off me. And plus, you know, I get big fans and they want to know this stuff and um, Absolutely. these little things I do. So it's, it's kind of, I never was into lessons, dude. Never. <laughs> okay, that's fine. But, but you're doing I, another one you said next month, right? Yeah, but it, but this, you know, when you got 25 people on a screen, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's 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 little, it's different than sitting one on one, you know, of course, you know, in somebody's, you know, in a hotel room giving some guy a lesson sure. or something, absolutely, uh, which is, you know, it's okay. But when you, the more the merrier for me, because I I thrive off of uh, excitement and 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 people, you know, you don't want to get on stage. It's like that excitement playing in front of thousands of people. I mean, that's that's what gets your adrenaline running. And that's what absolutely. I absolutely. I've just started playing guitar and, all my life. And where, where do people find it if they want to try to sign up for the next one? Uh, Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. Uh, they, it's a whole, you know, the master classes. Yep. Um, and the next one, I think, is in September. But everyone's doing them now. Everybody's Absolutely, doing them. yeah. You know, guitar players, bass players, singers. Jack Jack Blades is doing one. It yep. teaches people about songwriting or whatever. And, mm -hmm. uh, but it's kind of fun. And, and uh, uh, it's a little different, a little out of the box, especially for me. But mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed it. And, and I'll keep doing them. Yeah, awesome. Whatever works, you know. Awesome. Well, you've got the new CD, the solo one, hopefully coming out soon. Any idea when the video is going to come out? Are you waiting to get the record contract, the record thing settled? Yeah, you know, as far as my solo record, you know, I already did a video on Sex and the Money, uh, yep. uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm shopping for deals and I want the best deal. I want this record to be heard. Sure. So I make sure, you know, I got to put get all my ducks in a row here. To, there's things that you do when you release a record to make sure, sure. that people are here and we're talking about you know if i go with these european label frontiers of science night ranger mm -hmm. you know what they do with that they release in 13 15 countries or in europe then they license mm -hmm. to america and then they put over in, in the in J japan in the far east area and, you know i'm trying to get to south america this time because i know i got fans down there sure. so you got to make sure the promotion's up and be able to get this record heard. And Night Ranger is the same deal, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, just we are gonna be signing with Frontier. So uh, mm -hmm. they've done a pretty good job so far uh, getting us out there. So, um, you know, it's just, it's, but it's kind of a different situation right now. But the thing is, Mike, everybody's home listening to music. Absolutely. You know? I Absolutely. mean, you know, I, I, could, I, I see my royalty statements, you know? <laughs> you know, I got no gigs, people mm -hmm. are buying and downloading, you know? Sure. So sure. There you go. Uh, I've probably checked once a week that Brad CD, did the release come out, did the video come out? So, but now I know to be a little bit more patient. So, um, yeah, exactly. Excellent. Brad, anything else you wanted to tell the fans about before we wrap this up? Oh, well, I, you know, I'm just, you know, happy to be out there and still working and, and, and lucky and fortunate enough to be able to be home and do what I do. And, you know, I'm telling everybody to stay safe. I know I was a germaphobe before this mm -hmm. crap even came out. Mm -hmm. You know, I would never touch escalators and airports yeah. or buttons and ele elevators and stuff. I'd always use my knuckles and wipe it off, you know, because mm -hmm. you just don't want to get in your Whatever. But now <laughs> this is going on. You know, I got the stuff in my pocket. I'm just, everybody just stay safe, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, uh, you know try, to, try, to, try to get the best of what you can in the situation you're working with, whatever that may be. You know, be creative, you know. Uh, the, the people are creative. This is the time to do it. And, and, and a lot of people, there's, you know, even with these TV shows, my music-related TV shows I'm, I'm, I'm working on, you know, the whole thing with these, uh, these big network, TV networks and cable mm -hmm. networks, and everybody that I'm trying to pitch these, these, these musical TV show ideas to, they're all looking for content right now. Mm -hmm. So when things do open up, um, they'll be able to, uh, they'll have a, a full gauntlet of, uh, of material to, uh, to put out there. And, I, and a couple of these ideas I have have never been done before awesome. and would definitely be something that music fans and classic rock fans would be into doing mm -hmm. um you know uh follow me on on you know 
go on LinkedIn. That's my, that's my big yeah, social. Yeah. You know, I, I ended up going on LinkedIn only because there's so many, there's so many professionals on that site sure. <laughs> that uh, I've been able to connect with a lot of big people and get the ball rolling on some of these great ideas I had got going, mm -hmm. places, music and TV shows and such, and even record labels that I've hooked up with. But uh, I'm trying to build up my Instagram, Brad Gillis official. Hit me up on that. Uh, I, I do diddly squat on Twitter. Twitter, so <laughs> I lost my somebody hacked it, and I lost oh, no. my thousands of fans on there. I think I, I'm up to eight or ten. Oh boy. <laughs> Because I just haven't gone to it, but I got a buddy. I got a buddy helping me with my Instagram and Facebook, and he's and we're trying to post every other, every other day, and that's fun because I'm bringing back all these old photos and and things that uh, from the past, and and just found a treasure trove of cool stuff to post that that I'm getting a lot of uh, uh, views and likes on. So well, yeah, follow me wherever you can and stay safe, and uh, you know keep rocking, and let's hope on a great 2021. Absolutely. And best of luck with the sales pitch to the networks on the TV shows. Best of luck with the new shows coming up in Night Ranger. And we look forward to the new CD, hopefully much sooner rather than later, Brad. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it, man. My pleasure today, man. Yes, good yes. questions. Good, good time. And, and, and uh, you know, that's what I need to do. This, you know, you kind of amped me up today. I've done good. two so far. I got another one coming up. Awesome. And that just kind of keeps, it gets me psyched. Especially, you know, when people come in and say, oh, I love this song. Or the, you know, song <laughs> I kind of forget about it. I'm uh -huh. thinking, I'm thinking, well, I guess that maybe was kind of cool back then. Oh, so. look, I could probably go on for two hours with the songs you guys don't play that I love, but that'll be another whole conversation one day. I got to go back and listen to Neverland <laughs> and feeding off the mojo with oh, Derek Moon. <laughs> but both of those albums are two of my favorite Night Ranger albums, and they're great. I love them both. So maybe one day you'll talk for both of those from beginning to end. I know you sure. are. Sure. <laughs> Next time around, buddy. But thanks a lot, Brad. I appreciate it. Have a Take great care. day. All right. Take it easy. Yep, All you right, too. Bye-bye. All righty, there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed that conversation with Brad Gillis as much as I did. I'd like to take a moment and thank Brad for giving me some time to go over everything that he's working on. I had a lot of fun talking about it, and I look forward to your releases soon. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you next time.